Hello, hello, hello. We are back uh, for um, the discussion of, you know, from, I think, uh, day five and day six. Um, of course, we only got through, well, I, I split up the thing, making it in two parts because it was like an hour, oh, like an hour and 40 some odd minutes. So uh, just to break up, although it was probably a great conversation. Um, and I believe we were just, we were talking about wild animals versus domestic animals being a thing right from the beginning. Um, um, I think we might continue on with that, th that conversation a little bit. Um, but then of course we go into more stuff and we can talk about this, that, and the other, um, thing too, more on the scriptures. Uh, of course, the basic, I believe, creation of man we would talk about because we did get to we go get right to the end of chapter one. Finally, the end of chapter one. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. Anyways, actually, that should have been more said at the end. <laughs> so, uh, my outro. Anyways, uh, I guess uh, I will shut up and let me and Hello speak together. So, catch you in the end. Outro. So let's go into verse 25. Vayaseh Elohim et chayat ha'aretz lemina ve'et ha'behema lemina ve'et kol remes adama leminehu ve'yera Elohim ki tov. God made wild animals of every kind, livestock of every kind, or domestic animals, and all creeping things of the ground of every kind. God saw that it was good. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, I know. I'm just <laughs> sort of agreeing. Whatever. You know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I get the gist or whatever. You know. <laughs> okay. Twenty six. Vayomer Elokim say Adam b'tzalmenu b'midum kidmu tenu vayardu bidgat hayam uvaof hashemayim uvahema uvkol haaretz. Uko haremes haromesh ala aret, and God said, uh, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and they will rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the animals, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth." So th there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing is, it says, let us make man in our image. So the big question is, is what is he, who's, who is our image? Who does that refer to? Now, you and me have two different answers for that. <laughs> which is why I'm, I, this is why I said there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> so, um, obviously, I think you, I think your answer is, is, God and Jesus or something like that? Well, yeah, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the three, yet one, the Trinity, as we call it. Um, you know. Okay. But, that, but to me, it's even... I, I know a lot of Christians might even call this sacrilege. To me, I think using these terms was more a way to relate to us, you know. And we are made in God's image, just like, you know, like I have my body, I have my mind will emotions you know i have my spirit you know these are the three different things if you will but they're also the same thing you know, okay so. okay well um so i'll, I'll give you the, the let's just think through the text yeah uh, the text definitely has its own answer and i think that that uh the first thing we say is who when we ask when it says let us make man in our image like whose image or whose likeness is it talking about? Just ask yourself this question. In other areas where you know things were created, right? What were they what were they made like? Uh the well, I don't think it says they were made like anything. They were made out of something. They were made from, so they came from something, right? Yeah. Like fish come from water. Birds, uh, possibly the air, maybe the sea, water. 
right? Uh, animals you know, from the earth, cattle and dogs and all everything in the creep it out of the land. <laughs> right. So what is what is man created from? Uh, physically, the dust of the earth. Right. We see that in chapter two. Right. We see in chapter two. God gathers the dust up, and, and man's body is created from the dust of the earth. And so, uh, and, and so, in that sense, the us, let us make man in our image. One is obviously, in some way, we're similar to God, because God says, "Let us." And then we're also, in some ways, similar to Earth, right? Yeah. And so, I think the text has a very simple explanation for what it means to say, "Let us make man in our image and after our likeness." And um, and now it seems like there are different answers of, in, in what way we're like God. We're not infinite like God. We're not omnipotent like God. We're yeah. not omniscient like God. So what does it mean, our, our likeness? How, how are we similar to God, right? What, what is our likeness like? Mind, um, will, emotions. Well, uh, well, God doesn't have emotions. Oh. And I don't know if you can apply free will to God either. Yeah, free will and... I, I'm a bit iffy on saying, but well, yes and no. He can do whatever he wants, but he chooses not to do the bad things, if you will, for lack of a better way of saying. Well, well, wait a second. Can God, God go against himself? Uh, but I would have to say God does have emotions, and you would see that even in the Old Testament. So um, we have a principle. The Tanakh. We have a principle that the, 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 the Torah is written in the language of men. Yeah. And Rambam writes this in Mori Nevukim. And the idea is that if I express God in the terms of God is whatever it is that he is, I could never do that. Yeah. Because we don't know what God is. Yeah. It, well, it, it, whatever we think we know, we, we're just scratching the surface. Well, it's not just scratching the surface. <laughs> it's not even scratching the surface. It's that none of the categories of things apply to God. God is not created. Yeah. God is not physical. So you can't, so anything that, 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 that we could apply to ourselves, generally speaking, you can't apply to God. So emotions are something uh, that, that introduces the idea that God can change from one state to another state. But we don't believe that about God. We don't believe, we believe God is unchanging. Yeah. And, 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 and so, and also when we talk about emotions, those are things that are very much tied to being a human being, maybe even being an animal to a certain extent. Yeah, well, I say he, well, with the emotions, because he, I, I think God can be happy or sad, you know. You know I think that usually when, whenever we talk about God being happy or regretful or, or whatever, and we do use terms that are emotional terms yeah. to God, Every time those things are used, what we're really describing are God's actions. We're not describing God's state of being. We're describing his actions. I think we do so, both, but... <laughs> well, I mean, as we go through the Torah, we can look at those as they come up. But, yeah. but I think what we'll see is that is that more or less, I mean, I think overall, or I would say in every case, that when we're, we're describing God's actions, um, we're, we're, uh, um, we use term like emotional terminology. For example, when God kills people, we would say that's an example of God's hatred. But does God uh, really? I, I wouldn't hate say people? hatred, but well, maybe hatred towards the sin or whatever, because God cannot have sin in His presence. So, um, which creates its own uh, can of worms. That that that, yeah. that idea. <laughs> but, that's something else for another time. <laughs> but no, but what, but what I'm what I'm saying is is just to kind of like I don't think that that emotion is a good word because let's just for 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 the sake of argument let's just say that emotions at the very least are something that imply change of God and we don't apply we don't we don't believe God changes and that's because and I'm going to step into a realm of philosophy here and use philosophical terminology yeah. because it's a little easier to use it than for me to not do that and that is is that god is what we call simple and in philosophy it, it doesn't mean god's stupid yeah what it means is that is that god doesn't have parts and he doesn't have parts he doesn't move because movement time is an accident of motion 
And what that means is where you have movement, time is actually a measurement of a thing moving from one place to another. Yeah, the measurement right? of motion. The measurement of motion. And God doesn't move, right? And well, not all the way that we think, anyways. We don't know. Well, we don't know what that means. We, we have no way of applying it to God at all, and that's the problem. Ultimately, yeah. the problem is that we have no common language with which we can apply to God. Uh, and because we don't, um, we can't really talk about God. We can only describe things that God does. And that's the best, yeah. that I think, that we can do. Now, there are there is an exception, and the Rambam says it more in Luke, the guide for perplexed. He says that, excuse me, if it were for the fact that God himself in the Torah tells us that, uh, of, of certain attributes, right, of, of ways that we can praise him, he gives us uh, words that we can use in praise of him, then we shouldn't be able to even praise God, right? Because yeah. because it would be, uh, like, limiting to who God is. But we have the 13 articles of uh, praise. We read it in Yishtabach every morning. Uh, it's part of the morning uh, blessings. It is part of, you go to Pitsuke Tzimra, which are, like, the morning uh, pre uh Shema prayers. <laughs> there's a there's the last one before we get into this, the the the, the uh, blessings before Shema that Hero Israel Lord of God Lord is one. We have uh, different blessings we say before that. Right before that, the the the, the pre pre Shema Shema blessing we say Yishtabach and Yishtabach lists out these thirteen things. These thirteen they're not really correct to call them attributes but but uh, praises. And um, these are the things that God himself said that we can use these things to, to actually praise him with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So then if we go by the text, and let's just yeah. try to look at the text, is there a way that we can see that, that we're similar to God? Well, the first thing we see is God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness. And directly after he says that, it says, Vayirdu. Vayirdu, what does that mean? And he will rule over, right? He will rule yeah. the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the animals, all over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So just like God rules, we also have the capacity for rulership. That's yeah. one way that if you look if you look at the text itself, that is one way in which we are similar to God. Uh, another uh, one that we could say, for, for example, would be that... Uh, uh, some some of the rabbis have listed speech, our ability to speak, uh, and then also to be rational, um, to reason, are also ways in which we are similar to God. Yeah. So those so those are the, the most common uh, ways in which we're similar to God. But if you go by if you go by just the text, verse twenty six, verse twenty six, it seems like one of those ways is our ability to rule over. Um, although some people look at it more as not so much as this is how we're similar to God, but as God saying, uh, he, man is going to be able, I'm, I'm putting him in charge of ruling these things. Yeah. So it's, it depends uh, on how you want I to see it a little bit more towards the latter, but I can ladder. also see the, you know, you know, God rules over, we're in his likeness to rule over. Right. Sure. And, uh, whoops, I just caused a mess here whole second all right so let's go on to verse 27 i really want to get through 20 uh, verse yeah, two, I, i'd like to get to the end of the seventh day my <laughs> elohim at hadam betalmo betselam elohim bara oto zekel un ukeva bara otam and god created the man in his um in his likeness or in his image, and in the image of God, he created male and him, male and female, he created them. All right. So what's a little bit odd about this verse? Uh, that he's clumping the male and female together when we know uh, he ends up creating Adam a little bit before Eve. That's right. Exactly. That's a problem. But here it says Vayivara, and we talked about Vayivara refers to, connects us to the act of creation from nothing and that should be kind of a helpful explanation to us and that is that whatever god uh created the adam the male and female he created uh he created there at the very beginning before he started saying let there be light and making the separations uh between the different days 
So this creation is not the creation account we get in chapter two, which is a description of a physical creation, but I believe it's it's, it's the description of the spiritual creation, the creation of Adam's soul, the the wind of the, the breath of life that God breathes into the, into the nose of Adam, and so that's so so that is created both the male and the female soul, if you will, is created uh, prior to uh, the creation of anything else. Mm-hmm. Or at the very least, the potential there. So it says here, now it says, but Salmo and, uh, let's see here. So yeah, it says up here in, in our image. So here he's creating man in his image, right? And so, yeah. Okay, so and God created uh, man in His image, in, in His in His in, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. Now He says He created him in the image, but what does it not say? Well, reread it again. <laughs> okay, so it says here in verse twenty-seven, <coughs> God created man in His image. In the image of God, He created him, male and female he created them. But if you look at verse 26, there's something that's left out. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, so that's fine. So verse 26 says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And they will rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the animals, and over all the earth. Uh, what's right. missing? Uh, the ruling part and all that? Well, that, yes. But I mean, but, but, it's, but, but look at the very first part. It just let says, let us create man, and then it says, create ma- it, male and female? No. It's in verse 26, it says, let us make man in our image yeah. after our likeness. But in uh, that word there is, kitbotenu, our likeness. Bitsalmenu is like in our image. Uh-huh. It okay, doesn't now have it, in our image in the verse it, 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 it has just verse likeness. 20, now, verse 27 has in our image, but it does not have after our likeness. Oh, okay. Right? And so that's that's kind of significant. So so what is this image? The image is very distinctive from, from being similar to God. Right? What is the image of of uh, of God? Um, that's hard to tell. <laughs> Whoa. So... So what here, here's say first off. what a human looks like. So, so well, no, because God doesn't look like a human. Yeah, I but, know, but I'm right, know. but but the thing is, is that um, first off, it says, "And God created man in His image," but it doesn't say Hashem Elokim. And Hashem Elokim is in, starting in chapter two. God begins to use that format, but in chapter one, He only is referred to as Elohim. Uh-huh. <coughs> and I know you've talked about the Elohim and Elohim or something to that effect before. Uh, Elohim. Now I pronounce it Elohim. It's spelled instead of a K sound. It's spelled. It's it's actually actually spelled with an H in there. But it's a way to not use God's name uh, arbitrarily. So uh-huh. we say Elohim. Okay. So um, it's understood the usage of these names. Present like just like I said above about God's emotions are uh, used to describe actions to, to give an, an analogous idea to human beings so that we can kind of understand a little bit about what's going on. We'll use emotional terms, even though we're really just describing actions because it's easier for us to, to understand. Like the Torah is not given to scholars and it's not given to angels. It's got to be in a common enough language where everybody can kind of understand what's going on. Yeah. So Elohim and Hashem, the unique name of God, are two names of God, and they represent the way God interacts with the world. Elohim interacts with with the world in, in, in regard to laws and rules and justice. And Hashem, his unique name, four letter name of his name, uh, refers to God interacting with the world w- through mercy, right? To shuva, like the opportunity to repent, to ku and repair, and these kinds of ideas. So here it says, and God created man in the image of who? 
of Elohim, the aspect that emphasizes laws and rules, in, in, in a certain sense, nature, the power of nature, because you have Elo, is the, which is the root of Elohim, means like powers. Mm -hmm. So here we have where the image probably has something to do with Elohim specifically. And that refers not just to the male, but also to the female. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to put out there. Uh, just be, just just to to, to um, keep this moving, so we can because oh, we oh we have 31. So we're, we may have to end it because we're almost at 10:20. Uh, but uh, but but what I would say is is that if we connect verse 26 and verse 27, yeah. and we look at the image of God, what is the image of God? The image of God has got to have something to do with laws and commands and things like that. Justin. And if you read the Tanakh, a lot of times when God takes the Jewish people to task, one of the things he usually takes them to task for is that we're not we're not being just. We're not you know we're not we're not doing the things we're supposed to be doing. Like even ultimately sacrifices are not pleasing to God if they're not done in the correct way. And this is what happens when Nadav and Avihu are killed by the strange fire. It's not because. Nadav and Avihu themselves were innately sinful or that they were just sinners and they were bad people. Actually, he praises them. God actually praises them later uh, in the verses when he talks to, to Aaron that he will be like sanctified through his holy ones. And uh, the idea, though, is, is that there's a certain way things have to be done. And when you don't do things in that way, then that is then you are violating this aspect um, of justice and and whatnot. So uh, so in this way, um, in what way do we do, can we connect? Can we be in God's image? And I think this is where the notion of of speech comes in, where laws are ultimately written and communicated through speech and, and text and writing. Yeah, and and, and it's the rule of law and the rule of justice. That ultimately makes God long suffering for our sins. So let me give you an example. When we get to the, the generation of the flood, it talks about the lawlessness that breaks out through the earth. People are stealing from each other, they're murdering each other, they're taking each other's wives. There is no law, right? Yeah. The Tower of Babel, and we're told the people in, in the Tower of Babel are actually more sinful. Then the generation of the flood, but God doesn't wipe them out. Now, part of that, of course, we have God's promise, but this is actually a group that's concentrated in one area. There's no problem for God to wipe them out completely. But the reason God doesn't do it is because there is still this kind of like rule of law. There is still this sort of uh, connection uh, that, that binds people together through like uh, justice and law. Uh, but with Sodom and Gomorrah, we have a return to what we had in the uh, the period of of the Tower of, uh, I'm sorry, of the, the, the uh, of days, days of Noah. Flood, of the days of Noah, but it's even worse because yeah. what they do is they use the law as a way of being evil. So they, they did the very opposite of what God's intention for human beings is, the idea of using law to control our behavior and to be good and to demonstrate goodness and how to be kind and how to, and, and, and the obligations we have towards each other and towards ourselves and towards God. And so that's why I'm saying I think that when the rabbis talk about the way that we're similar to God or we have the image of God is perhaps through speech. I think there's something that's, that's there for that. Yeah. Uh, and I <laughs> just um, – I'm not sure whether it's in the Old Testament, uh, but I know I'm positive it's in the New Testament. <laughs> It's interesting with the way that you describe Sodom and Gomorrah there. You know, yeah, we know Christians, we know a lot of what went on, you know, based from the account. Or no, maybe not a lot, but a little bit based on the account. But with that extra, it, it, because, um, like I said, I'm not sure whether it's in the Tanakh, but um, I know it's definitely in the New Testament about, you know, the end days, the last days being like Sodom and Gomorrah and, of course, the days of Noah as well, but with you saying about taking the law and sort of perverting it. Well, that and right that's would exactly become wrong, wrong become right. 
Right. That's in the that's in the Hebrew scriptures. Yeah. That, I mean, that's I mean, that's exactly what's been happening. What's, what's been going on? They're using the law to to make evil good. And we see this with the woke, and we see this with a lot of the the problems that people in America and Canada and Israel that we're all fighting against, which and all over the world really, this yeah. is a worldwide issue, and um, it's using the law to switch the, what what's good and what's evil. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, for sure, that's a hundred percent correct. Hundred percent correct. <laughs> like I said, I just like how. The whole Sodom and Gomorrah. I just had to, you know, say something. Well, you know, and I'll tell you, this is the this is you the know, thing is that with and with way society is today too. You know, just, just sort of fits in. And I know this is completely off topic, and <laughs> I know you're about to say something. So, no, it's not. It's not off topic. I think that what you said is actually right on topic, and that's the that's the big problem. You know, uh, is that. We're, we're facing an era, you know, where things that used to be issues are are not issues. I mean, I I look at let's let me say let's, let's, I, I look at people who are who are uh, discuss politics and news and things like that, and they are so gobsmacked by what's going on that. The things in the past that they used to argue about, they kind of brush aside. So, for example, if you were conservative, right, you were anti-gay marriage, you were anti-gay this, you were, you had a lot of things that you were against. But, but now you look at some of these conservatives, and now they're like, we're not even talking about you. Don't, you want to be gay? You want to be this? Whatever. We don't care. We just want you guys to help us stop the progressivism because that's gone out of control. Yeah. And. You know, I mean, it's interesting. You listen to these people. The things they choose not to argue about is important because it represents how bad things have gotten. People who, like you take Bill Maher, for example. Bill Maher has yeah. certainly always been very liberal. I always thought he was, you know, far left liberal. Uh, but uh, but things have gotten so bad. Even he's like, you know, you know, these guys are making me look like I'm a conservative, right? And uh, he just doesn't accept a lot of those things. Yeah. But he's not a he's not a he was not a traditional ally of people on the right or on the center or anything like that. He was yeah. he scoffed and he mocked people on the right and in the center. And yeah. but there but there but 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 the the, the 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 right and the left in some ways are coming together and they're being thrown into the same boat. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's going on throughout the world. Now, I want to point out one other thing here. And this is just go back to the, the whole thing. You and I talked about uh, who, do, who what does it mean, let us create man in our image, right? Because there's a there's a problem here, which is, let us, right? And you said, well, it's, you know, the, the Trinity. And I said, well, it's how we read it. So here's the here's part of the reason that we don't read it Trinity. And yeah. that is... Because you look at verse 27, <laughs> and it says, Vayira. So above we have a let us make, right? But it says, and he made, and God made. Yeah. So we have plural above, and we have singular below. So when God's talking about making man, it's let us make man. When God actually makes man, it's singular. Yeah. And that that's the reason that we don't see the Trinity uh, there in, in verse 26. Yeah. Uh, and other, I mean, there are lots of reasons we don't see the Trinity there. But, yeah. but one of the. And, and, and by, I must yeah. point out that in uh, the scriptures, Trinity, the word Trinity is not used. It's Godhead. Trinity is more a modern word to describe it. Right. But, I mean, it doesn't change the, 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 the nature. The basic of the, premise. The, yeah, it doesn't change the premise. I mean, we, we're still disagreeing over the same thing, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got other terms, you know, handles and whatnot. But I'm just saying, I just want to point this out so that, yeah. you know, so you would know and other Christians who might be interested to know what's the problem, why don't we look at this? And, and I, like I've, I've also mentioned to you that I've had Christians point out to you before that it uses the name of God, Elohim, Elohim, I mean, and which has a yud mim ending, which is a plural ending. And they go, see, it's God himself is plural, right? It's an eternal trinity. Well, the, the problem with Hebrew is when you have a yud mim ending, 
is that it's assumed to be two. The plurality is always assumed to be two, unless you specify more than two. Yeah. But there are certain times when even though something has a plural ending, we understand it in the singular. Yeah. And the word Elohim is one of those examples. Yeah. And we see that in Exodus 7 1, where Moses is called Elohim. Yeah. He says, I have placed you as an Elohim before Paro. And I have taken you for Elohim, says the most high to all of you. That's the Psalms. Yeah. And so they both use that term. So what is the uh so so what I, I mean, so is there do we we don't nobody believes that there's more than one Moses. And not yeah. everybody believes that there's more there's multiple Moses in the same body. We all understand that Elohim is used in the singular. And so Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that, that's the whole thing. Although the Trinity is quote unquote three, but one, we understand it as one God, just three different aspects of the one God. I'm not sure whether that's quite the right word. You know, it's like be like, you know, there's Halal, you know, my friend, and then there's Halal the Father, Halal the you know, the husband, you know, sort of more like that. You're one person just because you have these different aspects of you doesn't make you more than one person. That's right. how I would say most Christians understand it. Right, but but and, and this is what I'll just point this out to you. Yeah. And that that is is that when when this verse is brought up to me or the the, the name Elohim is brought up, yeah. it's always it's, it's not brought up in the way you described it just now. Yeah. It's always brought up to me as meaning plurality. Yeah. I mean, they don't, they're not literally saying that there's there's God and there's Jesus and the Holy Spirit and those are three different entities. Um, they're not they're not saying that. Yeah. But they're trying to use Elohim um, to say that this word is somehow they're trying to use it for what you said. But the word Elohim, if you're going to use it, you have to use it correctly. Yeah. And to use it correctly, Elohim is a noun. And that's a plural ending. And yeah. that means more than one thing. It doesn't mean more than one eternal internal things. It means one more than one thing. And, and that's a and that is where I think and maybe this is a heresy. I know there are lots of heresies in Christianity. Oh, yeah. Where you know you've got a, a a explanation of Jesus where what we would say from a Jewish perspective is is that you're a monotheist, but that you are not a uh they call them strict monotheists, but I think it's really saying that you are that, that you you um you you do not uh you we differ on the, the question of the unity of God. Yeah. Like that God is we would say God is inter internally one, and you would say he's internally three. Yeah. And like Thomas I remember reading this, a friend of mine gave me uh, some of Thomas Aquinas' writings, and he explained that this was based on um that there are three essential attributes, I think is what he said. Um, and these three uh, uh, essential attributes uh, uh, correspond to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And why do we have only three essential attributes? Why don't we have 100? You know, he said that's an issue of church tradition. So, I mean, that's that, that's a whole other story in yeah. itself. So in Judaism, we have, there's idolatry, which is the, which I think there is the, uh, the problem of, like, for example, Zeus would be idolatry, right? Yeah. There's Zeus and there's Hera and there's all these different gods. And believing all of them are, are, are God. And, and that's outright, uh, you know. Uh, idolatry. Are, right. Or I, they have a special term for the kind that it is with uh, with them. But that's outright idolatry. And we're, I think where we, dis where we disagree more with Christians is on the unity of God. So, for example, we take the Shema. Here in Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one as referring to uh, God's unity. That's an expression of God's unity, that yeah. being in internal unity. Yeah, uh, well, we would even say that those three are in unity <laughs> as the one, but uh, I think I get where you're going with that. Right. And so I'm just, I'm just trying to explain that, that, that this is where uh, I've seen Christians in discussing this with me, they've yeah. jumped on Elohim, but I, I don't think they quite understand what they're saying. And yeah. that's why I'm just kind of like. Uh, I, I, I know there's yeah. some with that know the all the words a lot better than me. The, right. Uh, unfortunately, I have the little bit I've learned from different sources. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh man, I'm not equipped to 
uh, I don't want to use whatever, whatever term you want to use, yeah. debate, whatever, you know. But well, and that's, and that's, and, yeah, and that's, that's not what we're here for. But, you yeah. know, well, I don't mind talking about it either, you know. Just, to, sure. you know, like we do friendly guys, you know, we're sure. two friends <laughs> that, you know, we have uh, we have a little bit different worldview, but same worldview at the same time. <laughs> We definitely have points of agreement for sure. I mean, we have. Uh, some well, I'd say we're more alike than not alike. Well, for sure. I mean, like I would find more common ground with you than I would like with an atheist. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I mean, look, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, we definitely have a lot in common. Uh, there are things that separate us, but there are things that we that also we have in common with each other. And in a world that we we're living in today. Sometimes those commonalities are more important than the differences. Yeah, for sure. Now, I will say that that um, that that is so long as you know, uh, uh, we have unfortunately over here in Israel a problem with like aggressive and dishonest uh, missionaries. Yeah, and I watched a couple of your videos on that. Um, yeah, uh, the one guy that. To me, the one, I think one of the first ones you did, I think there was three or four, I watched two of them. The one was, unfortunately, he was trying to be an American-style street preacher in, in Israel. Yeah. And right. you got to cater to your crowd, for lack of a better way of saying it. Well, and I mean, he was catering like they were Americans. And it's like trying to call the these people that are... Uh, um, upright Jews, for lack of a better way of saying, you know, with the black yeah. and all that, you know, going the thing that they're the way that he was describing. You're not going to get any of them to your point of view by doing that, you know. Even Paul, you know, distinguished, you know, like I got to witness to certain people certain ways, you know. Right, and the important thing, but. But the problem is, is that with those guys, what they also do though is, is number one, the reason they do it that way is because it is effective. There's a certain amount of effectiveness to it. But a lot of those guys come over here and they target Jews who are pretty largely ignorant of Judaism. Yeah. And and that's that's part of what the problem is. And I'm not I'm not trying to beat you up over this. It's not your yeah. fault. But you know, I'm just saying that I'm just saying that 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 unfortunately it's an issue of. Um, they're doing it in a very deceitful and very dishonest way. And those, those are the ones I really have a problem with. And those yeah. are people who make me angry. And in fact, the reason that uh, I made those videos, and you see how I made like six of them. Cause yeah. I felt like after I made the sixth one or, you know, or, or the few I made, I felt like I had kind of said what needed to be said. Yeah. And then that was, you know, I was kind of done. Um, but uh, you know, is, is that you and I can have an, an honest conversation and yeah. Rick, don't belittle yourself that you don't know a lot. You, I think you have a pretty, you have a much better, more concrete understanding of what you believe than I think a lot of Christians that I've met and a lot of like uh, non tor observant Jews that I've met. Yeah, I, I think I, my problem is I can't articulate certain things as well as I would like. And, you know, I don't, you know, unfortunately I don't know the Hebrew or the Aramaic portion of it where you know i see a lot of pastors that do and of course they're supposed to you know i'm just you know you know well but, I, I don't but, do it to belittle yeah. myself i just i guess do it to be honest with myself well that's that's important because i i try to do the same thing like i recognize my limitations and you know as long as we're doing everything in humility i think that's extremely important you know because uh, after all i think humility is something that's very important to god yeah, that he sees that he sees that as as display, and so you and I are capable of having a conversation because at the end of the day, it's not about our our egos. Yeah, when we when we agreed to do this study together, we knew from the very beginning that we had points of disagreement. Yeah, but um, but we're able to say like you know, look, we're just learning to see what it says, yeah. and uh, and it's good to raise those points of disagreement. Just so, like, you know, anybody who might be watching this can sit there and go, oh, is that why we just, I didn't know that, that we, we had a different way of looking at it, you know. Yeah. Because I think a lot of Christians um, have this idea, and I think Jews, on the other hand, have a similar idea sometimes. Yeah. That the way that they think about the scriptures is the same way we think about the scriptures. Yeah. 
And we have very different ways of approaching the scriptures. Yeah. We have, for example, an oral tradition. You don't have an oral tradition unless you're like a Catholic, you know, or something yeah. like that. And I think we have a minor oral tradition uh, because although we don't do as much as we should and as good, um, we were taught to memorize, although we're taught to think on. Um, obviously, you guys have the, the Talmud and all that. Um, I'm for, I would say we've really put that into more. That's sort of what the New Testament is. You have Paul and Peter and a few others doing their commentary on, you know, Old Testament scripture and, you know, teachings of Christ at that time. You know, we haven't really added to it over the years beyond, you know, what, 70 or 100 A.D., you know, you know, which uh, I think uh, John, John uh, from Thing. Uh, right. you know, that's what I would, when I really stop and think about it, that's really a lot of what, you know, Paul's doing in his letters. It's sort of like the Talmud where he's putting his, you know, spin or his interpretation or I'm not sure how you want to word it, but he seems to do that a lot in instructing, you know, the church and, of course, Peter. And like I said, there's a couple others, too. And, well, you know, and, and I, um, and I discovered that more in, you know, was <laughs> talking with you too, you know, that that's right. what it would be. They were like your rabbis of the day for the Christian, the sect of that day. Sure. So I, I mean, look, so, so you and I can, we're free to talk about this stuff and, and I can, I can reject and accept everything and nothing that you say, and you can yeah. do the same for me. And we cannot be upset about it. And that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, is that sure. we, don't, we don't upset each other about it. And, and, and you know, we're, I think we're doing this uh, with good reasons. I, I, had a, I had a study, oh, man, it's about 15, 16 years ago. I met a, a, a Calvinist in Louisville. I lived there for about a year. <laughs> and uh, he, he, was, he and I got into a discussion, and then he wanted us to learn together. And so we went through a a book series called uh, Answering Jewish Objections to Jesus or something. Yeah. And uh, he, he kind of at one point got, got fed up and told me that um, that uh, his faith was stronger than my facts. And I was kind of like, well, then why are we studying together? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, but that was that was kind of, a, I, think, I think he had ulterior motives in, in that yeah. discussion. And um, it's, it's very rare, like, you know, um, there are atheists that I talk to that I feel like I can have a, a frank and honest discussion with. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't go out of my way to offend them, but I can be blunt. As yeah. You've probably noticed. Um, but it's, it's good to have those kind of conversations because it pushes me. Like, I, I always feel like when I get challenged, yeah, that's what I start growing and learning the most because then I got a question I have to answer. Yeah, and uh, I enjoy that personally. I don't, I don't think that it's something we should force on other people, though. Like yeah. if somebody is content in what they believe, and they just want to live their life, and that's based on what they believe, I don't really think it's my place to go and and and, and rock their world. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and I feel like that should also uh, be the same when it comes to the Jewish community. That you know, look, you know, a lot of Jews are happy being Jews. We don't need missionaries. We don't need uh, Islamists coming and telling us that, you know, we've got it wrong. You know, like, like the guys who enjoy talking about this stuff, they should talk about it. The people who don't enjoy it, yeah. they should be left alone, you know. So. <laughs> uh, the, uh, just the reason most Christians do is probably because of uh, uh, the end of Mark and probably, yeah, right, end of Mark, beginning of Acts, or maybe uh, the end of uh, each of the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, yeah. because it says to go out and make disciples of the whole world. <laughs> right, right. You know. Sure. Well, I, I mean, I understand that. I understand that that's, yeah. that, that's something Christians do. It's just that uh, yeah. I think well, there are more Christians who don't do that, though. Yeah. Or they don't do it as aggressively. But, yeah, they some do it a little bit too aggressively, I'd say. Or, unfortunately, the other part is too many Christians are flapping off 
when they're not living what they're talking. It's a big problem. Like if if you if you go back to that um, that video where the guy is trying to 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 uh, street preach to everybody, he talks about all the abortions in Tel Aviv and all the problems in Tel Aviv and all that. And why aren't we doing? Why, why aren't we taking care of business? Right. Well, I don't know about you, but I I have the news and I can see what's going on in the states. And there is a lot of evil going on in the States. Why is that guy in Israel telling us to get our act together when he should be in America getting American acts together? That's, yeah. I mean, that, you know what I mean? I feel like he, that, that uh, you know, he's being a little hypocritical. Yeah. So, it's, anyway. Yeah. And it, like I said, <laughs> hey, and I think I've made it to you. Yeah, sure. I'd like to see you to come, Christ. But, you know, like, my thing here is to learn and. You know, first and foremost, and you know, you have a lot to teach me because you know a lot of the uh, the information. <laughs> you know, as we're going through Genesis, you know the Hebrew words and what they mean and all that stuff a lot better than I do. Well, I mean, this is part of being a Jew. I mean, I, I mean, if you were to if you were put me on on, on a scale of uh, put me on a ladder. You know, Jews who know what they're talking about. I'd be about on the bottom rung of the ladder. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm somewhere along that line, some of the Christian stuff, too. You know, I, I've been, you know, learning for like 40 years now. So, you know, sure. You know, I accepted well, Christ when I was seven, but, you know, I didn't do much at first until my mom came about three to five years later. So, I mean, I didn't really get, I didn't really get that interested in, in learning until I was in college. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just the, you know, but well, let's, let's go on to 20. I, I really want to get done with chapter one. I really want yeah, to. Yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. Or at least, well, uh, chapter one or does chap, does the days go into chapter two? Or, even if we, we finish have, like day seven, you know, I'll be good. <laughs> we have, well, day seven isn't finished, is, is in chapter two. Oh, okay. So we have to finish chapter, we have to finish day six. And so, verse twenty nine, Vayomer Elokim ki nei natati lachem et kol esem zorea zera asher alpine kol had aretz veed kol haetz asher bo peri haetz zorea zara lachem yiel leachala. This is the thing you want to get to. That's a lot. Did you do more than one verse there? No, that's just one verse. This is verse twenty nine. Okay. And God, and God said, Behold, I've given you every herb which yields seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree which has fruit and yields seed. These will be yours for eating. So here he says, These foods are for human beings. Yeah. Right? He's talking to human beings. So let's see if, tw if verse 30 talks about animals. Uh, Rebus al haaris asher bo nefesh chaya et kol yerek esav lachala vehi came. And to every animal of the, of the earth, to every bird in the sky, to everything that creeps in the earth, in which there is a breath of life, every green herb for eating. And so it was. So this is what you were saying is that you believe that the animals were also vegetarians. And uh, it could be. I mean, this is pretty good evidence that they were. And something significant changes for them to no longer be vegetarians. So I won't I won't argue that point for now. Uh, but there's some who believe that they were uh, they were not. Let me see if I can find a yeah. I don't know if I, don't know if I want to look for a commentator right now because I want to get done. <laughs> we have one verse. The last verse. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Very good. There was evening, there was morning, the sixth day. Everything was very good. Everything. So he's saying that days one through six, everything was very good. And now we can move on to day six in chapter two. You mean day seven. Him next week. Day seven, I'm sorry. Day seven in chapter two of next week, Bezrat Hashem. Okay. Uh, well, so we start off day around. seven next week. <laughs> I guess that's good. Although day seven hopefully will be short, but then we got the whole expanded day six, I think. 
yeah, I, just chapter chapter three is going to get things are really interesting again. I think chapter two is, is interesting, but I think chapter three is where we have the sin and everything, and we can finally have that discussion you've been wanting to have about the fall of man or no, no, sure. well, first no, yeah, ever. well, so, well, actually, I think it is a verse in verse two, the one that I want. Um, where uh, you uh, I think it you said about the voice comes down and walks with them. Yes, that is um, and that is in chapter two. I believe you're right. Yep. You know, it's yep. well the well it's expanded day six plus what I would call the beginning of the fall or whatever. It's the fall of okay. chapter three. Right. It, it's uh, anyways. Chapter two says you know you know he was communing with him for you know on a daily seem daily basis for a while. Right. Right. In the garden till you know. Certain things uh, happen, which <laughs> we'll get into later. <laughs> anyway, Tom, anything you want to promote or whatever before we end the the uh, you know the, the the recorded portion? I can't believe I've been gone almost two hours tonight. We had a lot to say today. Yeah, I think we just I think we just want to get done with chapter one. That was my goal. My goal was like I'm getting I'm pushing through. I'm going to get done chapter yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can cut this thing up and do several several uh, versions. You know, uh, thirty minute parts, but. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've got the Amazon uh, account. I've got the coloring books. And I've got the comic book. I'm working on chapter two of the comic right now. Um, I'm, all, I'm close to ten pages into into chapter or issue two, uh, and uh, you can find it on Amazon. Amazon.com. Uh, just uh, type in New Hero Comics, uh, Inner World, Hello Penrod, and you will take you take a minute. And Hillel is H I L L E L, right? That's right. And Penrod is P E N R O D. That's right. There you go. Very good. good job. <laughs> uh, I've seen it spelled before, so that's probably how I remember. Well, good. That helps a lot. A lot of people uh, have uh, this, this controversy over how to spell my name for some people who've yeah. never seen it before. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll do my outro and all that by myself. But again, okay. thanks for coming on. It's been great having you. I might even divide this up into two because it's so long. <laughs> so, um, and whether people, I'm not sure whether I'll cut all this about at me at the, at the end or not. Okay, so see you in a few seconds, people. Okay, there we have it. We're finally done. Chapter one. Can you believe it? Finally done. Chapter one. It only took how many <laughs> of these uh, sessions? Um, you know, well, let's see. This is episode 18 minus what? Four, so 14 sessions to get through one chapter. Not all chapters are going to be this meticulous, of course. Um, we So that's, and this brings us to the end of day six. We will start off with day seven with chapter two. So. Um, I can't see chapter one or chapter two going as long as many sessions as chapter two. There are going to be some chapters that are only one session and we get through a couple chapters in one session, but hopefully this takes us a session or two, maybe three, you know, um, there's some big stuff in this, not maybe quite as, I think as big as chapter one, I don't think it will, um, bring forth the discussion. Uh, that chapter one has been brought forth as much, but as we were going through it. Anyways, so I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you um, later. Um, there's going to be another recording after this very soon because uh, I'm behind in putting these recordings up. So, <laughs> Although you won't know this because <laughs> of when it comes up. Anyways, uh, I guess that is it. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And we'll catch you on uh, the flip side or next video. So bye for now. God bless. Love you all.